up guys and welcome to Windows Showcase, a series where we'll tackle different versions of the infamous operating system, Microsoft Windows. And since this is the first episode of this series, we'll be taking a look at the very first version of Windows, the Windows 1.0. Released in November 201985, Windows 1.0 is, obviously, the very first version of Windows released by Microsoft. Now before I show you this version of Windows at its finest, let's first dive into the history of its development. It's 1981, and personal computers back then were still somewhat rather complex. Sure, PCs are a big upgrade from those huge and bulky computers that can fill an entire room, but PCs are still difficult to use. The main culprit? It's user interface. Now operating systems on computers back then, more specifically in the 70s and 80s, are hard to use, especially if you're new to this wonderful technology that is the personal computer. Interacting with your computer back then was a pain in the ass. Popular operating system such as the infamous MS-DOS uses a so-called command line interface. What this means is that when you wanted to interact with your computer, you need to type in commands to let your computer do stuff. Now in order to efficiently interact with your computer with whatever you wish it to do, you basically need to memorize different commands and the learning curve here is just too slow for a tech beginner. Now many tech companies, the first being Xerox, have thus created the graphical user interface or GUI or man, the way you pronounce it, GUI. <laughs> which is the user interface still being used today, an innovation from the tech industry. Now it's also 1981 and Microsoft was popular from their MS-DOS operating system at that time. The development of Windows 1.0 began when Bill Gates, founder of Microsoft, saw a demo of the VC-ON software at Comdex. Now the VC-ON is an operating environment made by the company VC Corp. It uses a GUI or GUI interface and can run on any IBM compatible PCs running MS-DOS. Now the software was short-lived and was unsuccessful, but it drew inspiration to Bill Gates and decided to start developing their own GUI operating system. This in turn resulted in Windows 1.0, Microsoft's own GUI operating system. Windows 1.0 was finally shown to the public on November 10, 1983 and later released on November 20, 1985. Alright, so let's delve right into Windows 1.0. So I'll be running uh, Windows 1.0 on VirtualBox as you can see here. Now typing Win on MS-DOS will boot up Windows. Okay, so let me type Win. So here it is. Now Windows 1.0 is very much different from the Windows we have today. Uh, multitasking here is very limited. Overlapping multiple windows doesn't exist in Windows 1.0. Instead, windows are tiled uh, except for dialog boxes. This feature is very similar to the multitasking feature found on Windows 8. Hmm, interesting. Now it's worth mentioning that when you are selecting an option on the menus, you have to hold the menu you want to select on your mouse then release your mouse button on the option you want to select. Kind of weird for an old operating system like this. But hey, the Mac OS from the Apple Macintosh computers back then also possessed this feature. Now the MS-DOS Executive, this window right here, is the window that always comes up whenever you boot Windows. It's basically just Windows Explorer but without the icons and it can only do simple tasks for files and folders like uh, opening them, of course, renaming, deleting, and getting the properties or getting the info for this matter. You can also view files and folders from other drives such as on your floppy drive. Okay, let's uh, now go with the programs that comes bundled with Windows 1.0. First up is calc.exe, uh, yeah, calc, which is just a simple calculator program. No scientific calculator here though. It does simple arithmetic calculations like adding, subtracting, etc. And uh, would you look at that, my cursor changed into a circle thingy. Oh, and to close a window, you need to double click this button right here. Holding it would show different options, such as, such as icon, aka minimize and zoom aka maximize yeah those were that's what they called back then next is calendar.exe it's just a simple calendar app you can add stuffs here like uh, eat breakfast go to work eat dinner stuff like that you can switch the view to month to see the days in a month obviously 
Oh, and you can also set alarms too in here. Next is card file. Oh, it's an address book program. Simple enough. You can add multiple cards, as you can see. And you can also save this to if you want. Clock.exe. Well, what do you know? It's a clock. <laughs> There's no digital clock feature here, though. But aside from filling your whole screen with this thing, you can also iconize, <clears throat> I mean, minimize this clock window into the taskbar down here, and it will show the exact representation of time on your taskbar. Pretty neat. Now let's move on to the control.exe. Basically, it's a control panel. You can adjust the time and date. You can also change the colors of your Windows title bar, and the, screen, the screen background, and among others. And you can also add new printers and fonts right here in the control panel. Next up is notepad.exe. It's, it's a notepad. What else can I say about this? Next is Paint.exe. So yeah, this is the very first version of MS Paint. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't support color, so uh, as a replacement, you could choose from different patterns that you can fill in to your shapes and whatnot. Oh, and this one's my favorite tool in here. All right, okay, show you. This is the cube tool. It lets you draw cubes very easily in here. It's sad that Microsoft removed this tool in later versions of Windows. Nice. Then there's Reversi, the only game that comes bundled with Windows 1.1.0. So yeah, this is a uh, two-player game, but I'm playing it alone right now. Oh boy. Next is Spooler.exe. Okay, it's kind of hard to explain what this is, but basically this app lets you show all the printers on your system. It's kind of a printer manager, so to speak. Next is Terminal.exe. Mm -hmm. no, it's just a terminal emulator program. And lastly, Write.exe, the predecessor to WordPad. Yeah, this is just like Notepad, but with additional text formatting features, such as putting bold and italicized text, etc. Okay, let me type something in here. save this one. Oh, and by the way, naming files back in the old DOS days were limited. You can only name files less than 8 characters long. Wow. 8 freaking characters! Yeah. So yeah, I can't name this sample text, so I'll just name this as sample. There. Now let's open that text file we've created, and uh, there we go! Works perfectly. And that's pretty much about the first version of Windows. So, thank you guys for watching, and in the next episode, we'll be taking a look at the second version of Windows, Windows 2.0. Oh, and to uh, shut this down, just go to the special, then end session, or just close this MS-DOS executive window.